Segway's downfall. What really happened? of the British man who now owns the Segway company. You may be familiar with the Segway. It sort of looks like an electric scooter. Turns out he was found dead at the bottom of a cliff. CBS News correspondent Mark Phillips has... Did you know that despite the hype, only around 140,000 Segways were sold globally by 2013? Buckle up as we dive into the intriguing story behind the colossal failure of the Segway, uncovering the miscalculations, public perceptions, and unforeseen events that led to the downfall of this once revolutionary personal transportation device. In terms of technology, the Segway isn't always highly appreciated these days. You probably don't give it much thought at all, in fact. That's about all there is to it, right? Perhaps you'll use one for taking a tour of a city or spot a policeman or security guard using one. You may be surprised to hear that in the early 2000s, the Segway was one of the most eagerly anticipated product debuts ever. It was being discussed by all as though it will completely alter the transportation industry. While some of the frenzy was undoubtedly fueled by online rumors found in blog posts and other places, a significant portion came from well-respected experts like Dean Kamen, the man who invented the Segway. Well, as a kid, I realized that the power of technology is awesome, you know, without tools. In case you're not aware, I would characterize him as a quirky, wealthy, and intelligent individual. He owns an island, flies in a helicopter, and is known for wearing denim. In the 1970s, while still a college student, he created a tiny infusion pump that made it possible to give patients consistent, dependable dosages of medication. Around that invention, he founded a business named Auto Syringe that he eventually sold for millions of dollars in his early 30s. Afterwards, he started a research and development firm with that money, which led to the creation of further significant medical gadgets. Among their innovations were a flexible cardiac stent and a portable dialysis unit. His idea to develop the cutting-edge robotic wheelchair known as iBot came to him in 1990 when he witnessed someone in a wheelchair attempting to push their wheelchair over a curb on the side of the road. It included six wheels, a motor, the ability to climb stairs and curbs, and the option to stand up so the wheelchair user could be at the same height as another person. During the design process, the team came to the realization that they could use some of the technology they built for the chair, such as the gyroscope balance, to construct an entirely new vehicle that would eventually become the Segway. Dean came and put a lot of resources and time into this because he thought it had a lot of potential. He even declared in public that, I think the Segway HT, short for human transporter, will be to walking what the car was to the horse and buggy, and I believe it will do for for walking what the calculator did for the pad and pencil. In essence, he believed that it would sell millions of units and establish a new benchmark for traveling across cities worldwide. It's unfortunate that the Segway has let him down so much. Since they have been around for more than 20 years, I venture that the majority of viewers have never used one. Given that they only ended up selling an estimated 140,000 units overall, and as of 2020, the devices are no longer being made. I'm virtually confident that the majority of you haven't purchased one. This is without a doubt one of the worst product failures in history. I thus want to investigate the reason why it failed so miserably in this video. Beginning with those initial expectations, I have listed what I think are the main reasons. Dean Kamen, as I have mentioned, was a highly regarded and accomplished inventor who expressed great enthusiasm for the Segway. It was being hyped by other well-known computer industry businessmen as well. One of the most popular and eagerly awaited product launches in history, according to Jeff Bezos at the time. It will grow to be as large as the PC, according to Steve Jobs' prediction. If that was accurate, just think of how the world would look like today. The famed technology investor John Doerr claimed that the Segway would reach $1 billion in revenue sooner than any other product in history if it were as common as the personal computer. Even a 2001 South Park episode referenced the excitement around the Segway's announcement rather than the actual device itself. Even before the public understood exactly what it was, they had been hearing a lot of these claims. Given that the project was incredibly private, there were only snippets here and there. Some speculated that it might be some sort of spectacular science fiction teleportation device. When it was eventually revealed on Good Morning America in December 2001, it was clearly not going to live up to the hype. Although it was a clever idea made feasible by years of developing cutting-edge technology, people's inflated expectations prevented it from seeming all that spectacular. The marketing strategy behind the Segway is another reason for its failure. You see, Dean Kamen's strength and the power of the other members of his team lies in invention. 
His organization had been studying and designing medical gadgets for more than a decade prior to the Segway, but they relied on another company to actually build and market them. For instance, Cayman's business invented the iBot wheelchair, which Johnson & Johnson sells. In contrast to his previous innovations, he established a distinct firm to manage the Segway's production and marketing, demonstrating just how much he trusted the product. Nevertheless, you do wonder if it was the right move for him not to even engage an outside sales team. Not to constantly return back to Steve Jobs, but he was given the opportunity to check out the Segway before it was made public. He is a man who is quite knowledgeable about marketing technological devices and items. In order to keep things easy and clear for the customer, he advised them to start with just one model. That was a significant portion of his 1990s Apple restructuring plan. However, Segway decided to offer two variants at launch. Jobs said that the Segway's exterior was fairly conventional and did not match the cutting-edge technology within. Yet they made the decision to go with the conventional design for the reveal and haven't really altered it much over time. Jobs also suggested that they stage a massive launch in order to draw attention to it. However, Segway opted to proceed extremely slowly and purposefully. Upon its disclosure on Good Morning America, the scheme was initially restricted to big businesses. Disneyland, the post office, and police departments had the opportunity to test them out in expectation that they would put large orders for several Segways, which obviously did not occur to the extent that they had hoped. In the meantime, it took almost a whole year after that unveiling for the typical consumer to be able to purchase a Segway, and by then, much of the initial excitement had subsided. One more factor contributing to the disappointment is that the Segway is just not feasible in most circumstances. In many instances, riding it on the pavement is also illegal, and they have struggled to overcome that significant obstacle. Segway invested a significant amount of money in campaigning to amend these rules in a number of states and towns, but other groups have opposed them, citing safety concerns. Not only was it difficult to find a location to ride it, but the device itself was unworkable. It was hefty, and it needed to be recharged again after only approximately 12 12 miles of use. Moreover, it was difficult to do other things at the same time, as riding it required both hands. With merely a basic bicycle, you don't encounter any of those problems, and you know what else? Generally speaking, a bicycle doesn't cost $5,000. Indeed, a Segway was an expensive purchase, and I'm certainly not the only one that believes so. Their former vice president of marketing acknowledged that the price was completely out of line. Not to mention, their former CEO stated that many individuals felt our items were overly costly. They were way too expensive. Indeed, they were. Do you know why? To operate the business, I needed the money. It appears to be that the cost of making it was so high due to the necessity of the battery, the engineering involved, and the decision to produce it in New Hampshire, rather in a less expensive country, that it would have been challenging to make a profit at a lower price. Furthermore, keep in mind that despite the Segway's pre-launch worth of $650 million, Dean Kamen was only prepared to give up roughly 15% of the company in order to raise money. Thus, there was perpetually a financial fight going on in the background. The frequent accidents is another reason why Segway Segways never took off. It takes some practice to become proficient at riding a Segway. Like with many other modes of mobility, the direction you wish to go determines which way you must lean. People may find it challenging because it's an unfamiliar technology. However, Segways have been involved in so many well-publicized, documented incidents that they have rapidly gained a bad, even dangerous reputation. Just seven months following it being made available to the general public, in 2003, U.S. President George W. Bush was traveling on a Segway in Maine when he memorably fell off of it. When Ellen DeGeneres was riding one on her talk show stage in 2010, she fell off of it. While riding one in 2015, a cameraman collided with Usain Bolt on a winning lap, not forgetting two distinct recalls in which individuals were falling off the system due to problems with the device. However, I believe that the most catastrophic incident occurred in 2010. As you can see, Dean Kamen was trying to sell the business by 2009. I believe he decided to focus elsewhere after realizing that Segways weren't progressing to be the next big thing. They had just collaborated with General Motors to create some distinctive looking concept cars, so it appeared that they may acquire the Segway business. However, all of that was derailed when GM declared bankruptcy. In the end, James Hazelden, a British millionaire, purchased it. He had founded a barrier-making company 20 years prior, specializing in military base protection. There was conjecture that he might have sought to use his professional connections to modify the Segway devices for use in combat. This is where things start to go wild. Hazelden would ride his Segway around his own property because it was against the law to ride them on UK pavements. One day, he rode it straight down a cliff and perished after losing control of it. Although it sounds like a joke, that was a horrible tragedy that happened in real life. You'll pause and consider whether a Segway is a secure means of transportation when the owner passes away while operating one. The last argument I have for the lack of success is that Segways have essentially turned into a joke. What immediately springs to mind when you consider a Segway? Probably not the greatest picture. I can't help but think of Paul Blart, mall cop. Most likely not the picture Dean Kamen had in mind when he and his colleagues spent 10 years creating the necessary technology. What are your thoughts on the Segway? Please 
let me know in the comments. Was it a truly terrible idea from the start, or was it an incredible invention that was badly handled? Put differently, is there another ending to the story that, in your perspective, would have seen a large number of Segway users populating major cities all over the world? I'm also wondering if you've ever been on a Segway excursion, as that would be my assumption. And if you are among the select few who have ever held one of these, be sure to let me know. Why did you purchase it? How did you find the situation? Are you currently riding it? Please share any further opinions you may have regarding segways, the product, or the business in the comments section. I'm interested in hearing your thoughts. If you've enjoyed this video, then you'll probably enjoy the one showing on your screen right now. Click now and we'll see you in the next one.